Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 11th MS Script 6 tutorial and in this video we're going to dive right into generators. Wow! Okay then gang, so one of the coolest features in ES6 is the addition of generators and uh, generators are basically just functions which we can play and pause whenever we want so that we can have ultimate control over the flow of them. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is just create a regular function like you've seen many times before and we're going to turn that into a generator and kind of explore what that can do for us. But before I do anything, I just want to point out that I am using Google Chrome regular browser here, not Chrome Canary anymore. And that's because I'm using the server that's built into brackets and that uses Chrome by default. Now, generators are supported in Chrome, so we don't need to worry about that at all. All right then. So let's create a regular function to begin with. So I'll say function. And then we'll call this gen, which stands for generator, even though at the minute this is not a generator. Then all we're going to do in this function is log a few values to the console. So let's log some fruits. First of all, pair. And then we'll copy this dude and paste it in a couple more times. And we'll change this one to banana. And then finally, apple, I think. All right, cool. So when we call this function, what is going to happen? Well, it's just going to log these dudes right down to the console, yeah? So let's refresh and we get those there. Cool. So this is a regular function. What do we need to do to turn this into a generator? All we need to do is put a little asterisk sign after the function keyword, and that is now a generator. So what would you expect if we save this? We're still calling this function, right? So should it do the same thing? Well, if we refresh, now we no longer see those things logged to the console. And that's because when we first call a generator, which this is now a generator, right? Uh, when we first call it, it is not actually firing the code. All it's doing is setting up the generator. We're saying to it, hey, set it up ready for use. And what that does to us is return to us an iterator. So this thing right here is returning to us an iterator and setting up the generator. And what we can do is store that iterator in a variable, which I'm going to do. I'm just going to call this a variable my gen and set it equal to that. So we're setting up the generator. It's returning to us an iterator, which is going to be stored in this variable, right? And iterators are just a way that we can iterate through a cycle of things by using the next method. So this now has the next method, which we can use. And that's what we're going to do to start playing this function, if you like. So first of all, we set it up. And then what we're going to say is mygen.next. That's the function we're going to use on the method. And that is essentially the play button for us. OK, so we're saying, OK, you've set it up. Now do the next thing. Now run the code. So if we save that and refresh, what it's going to do is now print those things out to the console. Yeah. So that's like the play button, if you like. So I said we could also pause these generator functions. How do we do that? Well, we do that using the yield keyword and we just place the yield keyword anywhere in this generator where we want to pause execution of the code. So I'm just going to place it right there. So what's going to happen? Here? Well, first of all, we're setting up the generator. We're getting that iterator. Then on the iterator, we're saying dot next. We're playing the function. So it's going to start to fire the code. And JavaScript runs from right to left, yeah? So it's going to console.log this thing right here. Then this yield keyword is going to pause the function right here. So it's not going to get any further than this. So let's save it and see what happens down here. You see, now we're just getting this pair message logged to the console. So this is the only thing that's working. When it gets to here, it's saying, look, you've paused me. I'm not going to go any further. So this code doesn't get executed. So how do we then execute that code? All we need to do is press the play button again. So we use the dot next method again. So we'll say my gen dot next. And that is going to play the function again. So first of all, it's going to log this. Then it's going to pause. Then we're calling dot next again, and it's going to do the remaining code and print out those two. Yeah. So let's add in some more yield statements like that yield and yield. And then finally, what we're going to do is say console.log all done, right? Just to tell us we're at the end. So let's refresh. At the minute, we just get pear and banana because that's because we're saying dot next, which is firing up until here. Uh, then we're saying dot next again, which is firing up until here. And then it's pausing because we have no dot next again. So we need to say my gen dot next again. And that's going to bring us up to here. Yeah. So let's save that. We should have uh, the third fruit. Yeah. 
And then to print out this, we need to say dot next again because currently it's paused right here. So we'll say my gen dot next for a final time. And then it's gonna log all done to the console as well. Cool. So now we've seen the play button, yeah, which is dot next and the pause button, which is the yield keyword. And what I wanna show you now is how we can pass data out of this generator into this thing right here, okay? So instead of yielding this console log message, I'm just gonna yield some values and these values are gonna be strings. So let's get rid of these console.log things. We'll still leave this thing right at the end. And this time what's happening is when we say my gen.next for the first time, it's gonna run the code, it's gonna yield right here, it's gonna pause, but what it's doing is yielding this value. It's gonna pass this value back to us and it's gonna store it in this iterator. Okay, so how do we access that value? Well, let's just log to the console what this iterator thing is. So we'll say console.log and then do that. Press save, refresh, and now you can see we're no longer logging these things to the console up here, so that's why we don't have them down here. We're still logging that, so that's why we see this. All we're logging now is this iterator right here, right? And you can see that what is happening is we're getting an object. This is the iterator object, and it's got a value property, which is pair, because that's what we've yielded, that's what we've given back, okay, to this iterator. And we've got this other property called done, which is false. Now, this property is just saying, look, we're paused here in the generator, we've not done with it, we've not finished, okay? This only reaches true after the generator reaches the end point, right? So let's do this for each one. Console.log, this one. And in fact, what I'm gonna do just to save myself a bit of time is just copy that and override these like so. And now we have all these things right here. So. Each time you can see done is false until the end, yeah, until the last one where it reaches the end, it logs this first of all, and then it gets to the end, and you can see now done is true, okay? Um, and the values pear, banana, and apple are passed back to us each time we use this yield keyword to pass back into these iterators in the value property. Makes sense, right? Okay, so that's how we get values out of the generator. Now you'll notice this thing right here, this final value is undefined because we're not actually yielding a value at the end or returning a value. All we're doing is logging this message. But instead what we could do is just return at the end a string all done. And then if we refresh this time, we get the value in this final iterator, okay? So that's how we pass values out. Now with generators, we can also pass values back into them. Right? And the way we do that is by putting the value within the next method, within these parentheses, right? So let me just write some code, then I'll explain it. I'm just gonna create some variables, var x. I'm gonna set it equal to that yield statement. And like I said, I'm gonna explain this in a minute. var z equals that, okay. So when we first use this doc, uh, dot next method, what's happening is it's starting this function, this generator, right? And it runs from right to left. So it's doing this, it's coming along here, and it's yielding that value, then it pauses right here. It doesn't go any further, okay? So that's the first time we use the dot next method. So if I was to pass something into this method right here, it's not gonna be able to do anything in it, in the, uh, the generator, right? So there's no point in passing something in to begin with because it, it, there's nothing to do with it. It's stopping right here, and we're not doing anything with that value. But the next time we call dot next, it's starting here, and the first thing it does is set a value equal to this variable right here. So what we can do is pass something into this next method the second time round. Okay, so say I wanna pass in the price of the pair, which is like, I don't know, $10. And that is gonna be stored in this variable x right here, okay? And we can do the same thing the next time round. Uh, we can pass in $5, and that's gonna be stored in y then we can pass in $3 and that's gonna be stored in Z, all right? So these are the prices of these different things. And at the minute if I save and refresh, nothing is gonna happen, it's not changed anything whatsoever. And that's because we've not used these variables. But what if we just return the sum of these variables, which is the total price? I could say return X plus Y plus Z, and then it's gonna return the total value, which is 18, 10 plus five plus three. 
Pretty cool, right? So that's how we pass values back into this generator. All right, so this is the basics of generators and you might think this is pretty useless, right? Wrong. And when it gets really interesting is when we start to think about asynchronous JavaScript. So I've done a little example here, which I'm just gonna uncomment like so. And um, if you don't know much about asynchronous JavaScript, this might seem a little bit like nonsense at the minute, but maybe after you learn a bit about asynchronous JavaScript, you can check this out and uh, it's gonna make much more sense. So what I've done here is create a function or a generator rather, and I've just called that generator, yeah? And then in this generator, we're doing the same thing. I'm just yielding three different values. In all these console logs at the minute, I'm just yielding three different values right here, yeah? And the values I'm yielding are these get requests to some data that I have. So this data is just here. I've created a folder called data, and this is just some simple JSON uh, files, which is storing some data for me. So I've got friends, Facebook friends, tweets here, and then YouTube videos, all right? So what I'm doing is in this generator, I'm using a get request, first of all, to grab the tweets. And then I'm gonna yield that value, right? And then when the data is passed back in, it's gonna return it to tweets. So I'm doing the same thing with Facebook friends and YouTube videos. So they're the yield keywords, right? Yielding these three values. Now, what I've done is create some smart code here and it's just basically wrapping the generator. So this is a function called GenWrapper and it takes a generator as a parameter. So just imagine we pass in this generator into this function right here, yeah? The first thing I do is I set up the generator slash iterator. So I call the generator right there that we've passed in, which is this thing, and I've stored the iterator that it returns in this variable my gen, much like we did before. Then what I've done is create this function called handle, and this is gonna handle the yielded values, right? So it's not called at the minute, so it's not gonna run just yet. But what I'm gonna do at the bottom is return this function, handle, I'm gonna pass in as well, my gen, which is this thing dot here, dot next. So what we're doing is we're saying my gen dot next, which is gonna start, it's gonna fire the generator, right? So first of all, when we call that, it's gonna fire the generator. And it's gonna do this get request, right? And it's gonna return that to us, okay? Because we've put yield there. So it's gonna return the result of this get request to us. So what I've done is I've passed that iterator into the handle function. So that iterator is now called yielded, right? And what I'm doing first of all is I'm checking to see if yielded is done. And for as long as yielded.done is false, this is gonna fire, okay? So as long as we're not at the end of the generator, this is gonna fire. Now when we start, we're not at the end of the generator, we're just here, we've just started. So this is true then. And then what we're gonna do is say yielded dot value, which is this thing right here, dot value, dot then, because when we use a get request like this, this is using jQuery, then this is gonna to return to us an object with a promise interface. So we can use dot then to say, then we want to fire off a callback function and pass in the data that you've retrieved, which is all this JSON, right? So within that function, I'm gonna return the handle again, which is this function, and I'm gonna call the next method and pass the data back in to the generator, right? Remember, when we use the next method for a second time, it stops here the first time. When we use it for a second time, we can pass in data between it, which is then stored here. So all the data it's got from this request right here is now going into this thing right here. And we can log that to the console, yeah? And then it carries on and it comes here, does this request, returns it to us, and we go through the cycle again. If yielded.done, which it isn't done yet, then carry on. Then what we're gonna do is grab that value, say dot then, get the data, return the handle again, do my gen dot next, pass the data back in. So we have that data stored in friends and we do something with that. And the same thing for the YouTube videos as well. So we're cycling through these things using this kind of smart code, which by the way, is quite crude. Um, you can get libraries to do this for you much better. But anyway, the point is, um, we're going through this generator using some smart code and we're grabbing this data from different sources, if you like, and we're going to do something within it, all right? And if you look at this right now, this looks very much like synchronous code, yeah? 
It's uh, one after the other and it looks very logical, but it's actually asynchronous code. So this is a really cool way to do things like this. And like I said, you don't have to write your own smart code like this. You can use a library to do it for you, a promise library, much like Q. So um, what we do normally is say, first of all, we'd have to pass this uh, generator into the function. So to call that, we'd do something like this, right? Uh, gen wrapper and then surround that entire thing like so. Yeah, but um, if you use a library, then we could do something like q.async and that's gonna do a similar thing for you. So you don't need to write your own kind of function, but this is a really cool way to display your asynchronous code in a synchronous like fashion really cool yeah so that's why i quite like generators so there we go guys that is generators in a nutshell um quite complex at first but once you can't you know you start practicing around with it then it is going to be a really useful tool for you and uh, i realize i've just not shown you how this works so i'll do that right now gen wrapper so now what I'm doing is I'm calling this gen wrapper function here and I'm passing this thing right here, this generator into that function, yeah? So I'll save that and refresh. And now you can see, first of all, I'm getting this returned to me, which is the tweets. And then after that, I'm getting the Facebook friends returned to me, Mario, Peach, etc. Then finally, I'm getting the YouTube videos returned to me as well. All right. So there we go, guys. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like, and I'll see you in the next video.